Welcome to the Man Cave Podcast with Dan Casper. Jake Bokes, Conservation Warden for the uh, great state of Wisconsin. Joining us now for our outdoor tidbits. Jake, how are you doing on this fine Thursday morning? I'm doing good. Another another great Thursday and happy to be on the show with you. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate it, man. And we've got a few questions uh, ready to rock and roll here. So uh, let's let's jump right into it. First off, we had a texter, first-time texter, so thank you for that, uh, asking question for the ward and kind of a two-parter. What is the latest on the use of the live scope, and do you ever foresee a sandhill crane season? Yeah, good question. So the the live scope question, um, you know, that made some headlines because it was in the spring. You know, the the thing about the spring hearings is that it's strictly a advisory, I guess, questionnaire. Um, what fisheries, what the fisheries program, the wildlife program, the Conservation Congress, or the Natural Resource Board do with those questions is they just look at them and go, was there a lot of support either one way or the other on if this is something we should even consider, you know, working on enacting, you know, changing. So it, it, nothing changes out of the spring hearings. It's just more of like a, a, a poll on what people think about it. Um, and off the top of my head, I think it was pretty dead even on, on yes and no, if it should be banned or not. Um, typically, when there's something like that where it's kind of split it just means that it goes to it just is kind of like well no one really is way favor of having it or way favor of not having it kind of keep it a status quo um so i don't foresee anything really happening with that um what you might see is like the question posed in a different format in the future years um just like worded differently or described differently potentially so i don't really see anything changing with that but I am not Nostradamus, so I don't know everything. Right. <laughs> um, as as far as uh, the Sandhill Crane season, um, you know, my professional opinion is is I just I don't know that such a it's you know there's we have a really um, engaged like Sandhill um, what do you want, like a group. I, I don't know the name of the group. Um, but there's a there's a pretty strong protectionist group that um, supports sand hills and all the other cranes and protecting them. Um, so I don't know. You know, it's always good to have groups that want to protect our animals and stuff like that. Um, but I just I don't know how that attributes to changing everything through the legislature on if we actually have a season or not. You know, part of it is that they're regulated by the federal government too, so we probably have to get permission from them as well as have it be supported from the state and the governors or the state, uh, like, uh, legislators and different things like that. So everything's a process, especially on those two. I don't see anything changing anytime soon. Yeah, it's, It'd be uh, interesting because I've talked to a lot of people who say those Sand Hill cranes taste just like chicken. Well, it's uh, their nickname is the ribeye of the sky. <laughs> the ribeye of the sky. I know you can, I know you can <laughs> yeah. go out to the Dakotas and harvest them. I've never actually tasted them. Um, but I know, you know, there's a, there, I mean, we all see them around here. And when I used to work out in Mantua County, and granted, this was almost a decade ago now, they were just everywhere out there. So I know we have a big population going through here. I think part of it is because we have such good habitat and, and we protect them and everything. So I don't know if that'll change in the future, but, you know, you, you never know. You, we have seasons on everything these days, it seems like. Yeah. Uh, for what it's worth, I, when I Googled it, there was an article in the, uh, uh, General Sentinel that said because they did a poll uh, on this and it said fewer than one in five Wisconsinites uh, supported uh, a sandhill crane hunting season. So I don't know who participated in the poll or not, but <laughs> that was that was from, from March. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that poll too. I think they might have um, posted it in the Outdoor News a couple mm. months ago. Yep. And like you said, I'm not a hundred percent sure on who they reached out to for that poll because. My the people I know, it would not be one in five. I can tell right. you that. Yeah, exactly. So, well, <laughs> it's a pretty low number for yeah, anything. Yeah. Well, kind of to, to feed off that too, where you mentioned, you know, and the coaches and such. We had somebody also ask. Uh, it sounds like first time they're going to be uh, going across uh, state lines to do some hunting and fishing. Uh, they're wondering if I hunt or fish out of the state or country. I know a lot of people are in Canada right now. Uh, do I need anything special? 
like a special tag to, to bring them back across the, quote, border? Yeah, that one's a hard one to answer, and only because depending on what count, what state you go to, country rules that you have to engage in when you come back to your home state um, and different things like that. Um, in Wisconsin, you know, basically when it comes to, like, transporting stuff, like, the big things are if you're deer hunting, you're not supposed to move CWD. You're not supposed to move deer, hold deer out of CWD-affected counties uh, into counties that aren't CWD-affected. Um, if you're duck hunting, you have to at least transport the duck with at least one full feather on it so it can be identified. Um, same with fish on some of the Great Lakes and stuff. You have to have you have to be able to provide you know different elements of the the skin or carcass so we can verify length and species. Um, so there are you know there's little things here and there. The 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 main takeaway and it's a really good question. The main takeaway what I I like to try to tell everyone is just do your due diligence on documenting everything wherever you're at. Um, that way you can always show, you know, whatever state, whatever law enforcement agency or, or DNR, you know, what you did. So, like, if you hunted in Minnesota and say you harvested a deer, if you take a picture of it and, and it shows your date and time on it and it shows what kind of deer it is, and then you registered in that state, and then say you even processed in that state, when you move it back across the Wisconsin state lines, I would just make sure that deer is in a box that's labeled or the packages are labeled Minnesota deer quarters, whatever, you know, um, just have everything labeled. So it's like so obvious, you know, that the newest of new game warden could look at it and be like, Oh yeah, you shot or you got this fish in Canada. And, um, the other aspect to that is like, say you do take some fish from Canada and for whatever reason, there's a game warden, you know, looking in your freezer, it should be, you, you want to make it so it's very obvious, like, okay, those are my Minnesota fish, those are my Canada fish, these are my Wisconsin fish. You know, if you label everything appropriately, you know, to Walleye Canada, uh, June 12, 2024, you know, make it very obvious so there's no, like, questioning, like, well, is that really a Canada fish, or are you just saying that? Mm-hmm. Um, would that be kind of similar, do you know, off the top of your head, like, say you got a big elk in Colorado and you're bringing it back to your local taxidermist, kind of the same stuff there? Same stuff. I'd say that with any same species. You know, out there, I'm pretty sure. Well, actually, out there is, is a lot of different states, so that's generalizing. So every state has its own process. Some, some still, you have to go in and get a hard, hard copy tag or like a, uh, you know, like a band like we used to have. Um, or uh, some of it's just electronic, and you get a tag punched, or you just check it in online like we do. So everything's different. But if you just document it that way, label it accordingly. Um, and, and keep your licenses with you, like you got a Canada fish license, you got a elk tag out of Idaho, stuff like that, and you keep that stuff with you, it just helps us, it just helps you show the different, or kind of helps you show where you were and differentiate different species. Mm-hmm. Uh, late texture, so not, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, it's not, you know, sometimes, you know, I always feel bad because I'd love to give the perfect answer. Sometimes it's hard just to give that exact right answer because there's so many situations, so many species, so many states and provinces. It's just make sure you do your diligence on wherever you're at and then wherever you're going. Just kind of look through the rigs of each entity and, and just make sure you're doing it right. Uh, somebody, uh, Jake from State Farm, with, uh, with a last-second uh, text came in here uh, and was asking if you heard about uh, Iowa's uh, uh, banning trail cameras uh, for, for hunting season. Have you heard anything about that? I have not. Okay. I, uh, luckily, well, luckily, I don't know, luckily or nicely, I've been off for the last 10 days up in the Boundary Waters, so Ooh. my uh, my internet access has been limited, which is pretty nice. <laughs> You're lucky, but, um, man. <laughs> I know. Well, mosquitoes were lucky. I think they took half my blood. But um, <laughs> they, uh, I haven't seen that. I've heard different states do that. I've heard of different um, hunting organizations or competitions and stuff starting to ban different cameras for fair chase stuff um you know they asked about the question the first question about live scope um kind of comes back around like in wisconsin i know we're talking about iowa here in wisconsin in my career i've never seen the state of wisconsin ever limit opportunity um now that's not saying something won't happen but you know underwater um, cameras for spearing live scope jack jaws for for ice fishing um, trail cameras and different things. The state has never taken a position on on restricting technology or stuff like that. 
Um, the fisheries department manages our species through bag limits, possession limits, um, and the compliance that comes with that and the science and the numbers that come with that, not how they're caught, but how many are there. So I don't see anything around here changing much when it comes to that. But, again, anything can happen. But um, around here, the state doesn't really restrict how you do it. Just we try to manage the numbers through science and and regulation or science and regulations and stuff like that. All right. Bob, you got anything that uh, you want to throw in there before? You ever seen a 9 by 7 elk? <laughs> no, no, but on the, the ranch I was on last week, they had one. It was the most unbelievable rack of horns I've ever seen in my life. Really, nine on I one bet. side, unbelievable. Sorry about I that, said, guys. Where'd you get it? He said, right over the hill from where we were working cattle. I said, really? Yeah, he said, and you see them in the morning all over. But that was an unbelievable rack of horns. Where were where were you at? In Montana, just uh, outside of Billings, Montana. Sand wow. Springs, Sand Springs, Montana. Oh, that sounds like a nice trip. Yeah, yeah. Um, they got a lot of elk. I said, "Would you allow hunters out?" Yeah, we've got, we have hunting parties out there, and you hunt on certain sections of the ranch. So, uh, boy, they got some big, big elk on that ranch. I saw a photo on Facebook the other day about uh, somebody posted uh, the elk on just outside Black River. There were some nice ones oh, yeah. in the fields out there. So, oh yeah, are there been up there already? Yeah. Or were they from last season? Uh, this year, uh, because there was just oh. newly planted fields out there, too. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, Jake. Well, hey, we appreciate the time as always, buddy. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week, man, and uh, we'll catch up yeah. with you again soon, okay? Yeah, thanks, guys. Talk to you next week.